Big news in the TM Master Cup Series this week is that Carbondale Raceway may lose its slot on the TM Master Cup Series calendar next year. Carbondale has been a series favourite for a long time and it could be replaced by a brand new super speedway in Texas. Personally, I hope that's not the case because if there's one thing the series needs less of is super speedway racing and the series officials have been pretty good about that in recent years. Another track that might be losing its date is the track we're at right now, the autodrome with Daniel Esteban, named after the famous Formula A champion and champ car driver. Some of those rumours have probably come from the TM Lights race the other night, which saw a massive crash midway through the race that has put Arturo Ortega, the Mexican driver, out for the rest of the season and possibly for next year as well. Despite a brilliant performance from Brazilian Raul Bianchi in the race, it was the Arkansas driver, Brooke Ingverson, driving for the Lennon development team, who took out the race win with her teammate, John Dilks, coming home second. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Taking out the Delano Paul Award and doing his championship hopes a lot of good is Adrian Devereaux, driving the number 26 Colton Real Corsair for Hot as Walter Racing. On the outside of the front row, Arto Kakinen in the sugar-free launch car. Third place starter, Carlos Donzello, one of four Brazilians in the field, gets a terrible start. Tom Delgado rockets around the 75 car, who a lot of people thought was going to attack Devereaux at the start and go for the lead. However, Delgado is going to have that honor, and despite having a good run off to corner number four and coming into turn one, Devereaux leads the first lap by an inch. Delgado, his championship hopes on life support. Joao Paulo Vidal, who qualified 12th in that Catsum, an awesome job by him, uh, finds the wall very early in the race on lap two after inexperience caught him out. Carlos Donzello, uh, car 75, is going to head into the pits on lap 4. That is, it's a slowly delaminating tire on that 75 car, and that explains why he didn't attack Devereaux as aggressively as he did on the start. He won the pole last year. He is one of f a record four Brazilians in this race. Scott Bates in car number 88 is a pack racing master. He hasn't won a race in two years. He's been fastest in all the sessions except for qualifying. This 88 car is now running P1. The last time Bates won a race was a night race, and that was in Canada. The Oklahoma native is one of a few drivers in the field who are military veterans. Another driver having a very strong run early in the race is Craig Yonser in the 69 car, who is marching his way towards the front. Currently running in ninth place, he's been very good at some of these short ovals, some of these high-speed shorter ovals. That seems to be what Yonser has uh, specialized in, and he's having a very good opening stint to the race. Marcus Leonard and Kurt Pliskin, the two Power Steering Incorporated cars, are mounting a strong challenge. Now, Leonard was sent to the back after a collision with Tony Durbin in Japan, and he's come from 39th to 2nd in 8 laps. So you can see that these uh, Power Steering Incorporated cars are really having a strong run. Leonard will be leaving the team at the end of the year to move over to Zenus Racing, and you can tell that Leonard and Pliskin appear to have equal cars, but it seems that Leonard is their uh, lead driver at the moment. Leonid Roderick has been playing with the high line all throughout most sessions. Whoops! That's a bit uh, too much there. Looks like Roderick just pushed the envelope a little bit. He's been work trying to work that high line, but it looks like that just caught him out a little bit. Uh, the, out the very, very outside line does not have nearly as much grip as it did in practice. And Roderick pits to repair some of the damage and uh, a cut tire on that four car. Arto Kekin and his teammate in the meantime has just assumed the lead in the uh, sugar-free launch car. This 14 car has been very, very strong all weekend long. Arto in particular has been very confident he can get, um, whoa, Bouvier in the 7 car has been having some mechanical problems with that car. Uh, now Jacques Bouvier doing what a backmarker should do. He's had, not having a very strong run so far. Uh, something clearly has gone wrong mechanically with that car, but you notice Bouvier for the most part is holding his line and letting the leaders go by wherever they want. Uh, well, except straight through him, obviously. Bouvier doing what you need to do when you're a backmarker. Avery Holtzman in car number 95 is having his best performance in quite a long time. He has actually been very quick so far in this uh, in the race. He's worked his way to the front. That's Chris Johans in the 64 and is inside. Johans contending for the championship. And oh yeah, Adrian Devereaux is the guy he's racing for it. Devereaux in front of Johans in the, that 26 car. Here's Ethan Everett in car number 11. He's not been having such a good day either. Everett has hit the wall on a couple of occasions, and you can see it's proof that it's pretty difficult to race around this track because two of the best in the series, Lean and Roderick and Ethan Everett, have both found the wall fairly early on. Everett struggling on, but now looks like he's heading into the pits as well to repair some of that damage early on, hopes he can catch a break later. Chris Johans in the 64 makes a move around Adrian Devereaux, who appears to just surrender the lead right there. Looks like Devereaux uh, not trying to race Chris Johans too hard too early. 
However, uh, Johannes falls foul to Arto Kekkonen and Scott Bates' challenge, and they go around him. Independent driver Jose Luis Martinez in the eight car moves up to third. Kekkonen now making some move around Scott Bates in that 88 car as the 14 car assumes position number one. Arjo has looked very strong in these past couple of races. Here's another Independence Trophy contender, Palmer Styles, in the 21, the only uh, owner driver among the uh, Independence Trophy contenders, and only one of two owner uh, two owner drivers in the field. Scott Bates is the co-owner of his car. Obviously, he is the team founder of Team EFR, but uh, that's not an Independence Trophy team. Carlos Danzel in that 75 car, another Independence Trophy contender. But, of course, he is a lap down at this point. Lewis Kingston and Ian Cooper working together come to the front. Ian Cooper, that bright pink car there. Kind of hard to miss that car, even though there are the two uh, uh, breast cancer awareness Volpes out there. Marcus Leonard making a challenge for the lead in the triple nine onion machine. And now Marcus Leonard at the stripe. Oh, looks like Kekkonen had the lead that time by. So Marcus now challenged for the lead. He's going to get the lead coming into one. Car triple nine clearly having a strong run. Matthias Taub of Sweden in the uh, 37 car. He's Arto's teammate starting next year at the. They'll both be moving over to Gessler. Adrian Devereaux right behind him. Taub having another strong run this year. Oh, Marcus Leonard's got problems. The triple nine car is blown up, and there goes his championship hopes up in smoke as Marcus Leonard heads to the garage very early in the race. An unfortunate early exit for the for the uh, Vancouver native. Arto Kekkonen is now about to lap Dan McKay in car number 20, and you'll notice that there's a huge traffic jam behind him due to some other lap cars, and this led to the first caution of the night on lap 32. Free Holtzman coming into turn one is going to cut down on the racetrack, notices Kurt Pliskin's there, comes back up the track, Kurt Pliskin hits the paint, shoots up into the side of Holtzman's car, Holtzman goes around, comes back up the racetrack right in front, oh no. Oh, that, that, that wasn't. The massive crash in turn three on lap 52. Jacques Bouvier had no idea that was coming. He was on the brakes, but that, that clearly was not enough. I'm very concerned about uh, some of the drivers down there. Scott Hamilton and Carlos Donzello in particular. Now we're going to watch this. You see Dale Roswell and Carlos Donzello are both in the, uh, in the wall over there. So that's why they wound up that far back in the pack. Pliskin gets up into the side of Holtzman. Pliskin is at this point trying to get his car off of Holtzman to keep that from happening. And Holtzman's just trying to keep that car from spinning because he knows this is going to happen. Holtzman gets very lucky here, comes back up into traffic, hits it's well, that was a nasty hit onto the uh, onto the roof of these 46 car and into the side in the driver's door of the uh, Carlos Anzello car. Bouvier took a ma uh, took a massive hit there. He just went almost just caught air and shot into the 75 car. I've never seen anything like that in a long time. I haven't seen anything like that in quite some time. Leonid Roderick got very lucky here. We're gonna get, uh, well, there he is there. Now watch, here comes Holtzman. You see, Boovy gets knocked in the air, almost wipes Leonid Roderick out as well. And I think uh, Roderick is probably, uh, well, this brought out a, a very, very lengthy red flag. And uh, as the graphics say, Scott Hamilton, Jacques Bouvier, and Carlos Donzello are all uh, currently in the hospital. I have no word on uh, either of them. But here we go back with the slow motion view. Watching car 95, Avery Holtzman. See, he looks like, uh, that is, uh, Pliskin gets into the back of him, and Holtzman didn't uh, go up further than the track, because otherwise he would get into the 60 car of Caesar Villanova. Here he comes. This is... There's really nothing you can do about that when you're in Holtzman's position, but uh, at the same time, uh, Holtzman was trying to keep prevent that incident from happening, and Kurt Pliskin did his part to try to prevent that from being worse than it was. The race was restarted after an hour-long red flag, and Arto Kekkonen's car lost the gearbox while on the pace laps then. So Arto fell out, and his championship hopes were dashed. Scott Bates took over the lead of the race, but he's got some lap cars in front of him. You'll, no you'll notice Dan McKay, Cesar Villanova, and you'll al also notice Martinez in the 8 car, who's not been having the best of nights after that. But here comes Robert Dorian and Alan Hodges. That is for position, along with Chris Johans in the 64. Leonid Roderick pits right after the restart. We thought that Roderick might actually park the car out of apparent respect there, but uh, that wasn't the case. Apparently the team told him to get back out there. 
Ian Cooper in the triple seven car and Zelda Ashby in the 55 also having very good runs. They're currently running for, well first and third. Adrian Devereaux in the 26 car who didn't think the race should have been restarted either also made his way uh, through the field and you'll notice this 26 car having a fairly solid run so far. Martinez in the 8 car not uh, well looks like he might be getting in the way just a little bit. Devereaux continues his strong run but he's still got to think about the championship and Chris Johans is in front of him. So Devereaux is uh, clearly focused on just beating Johans at this point in time but I'm pretty sure winning the race would solve all of those problems. Alan Hodges, his team owner and teammate, is currently in the lead. Scott Bates in the 88 car is going to have a peek inside. Bates has been the quickest car all night, and there he comes back to the lead. This 88 car is currently flying. Tony Durbin in the 33 car is going to work his way up to second after Devereaux takes over the lead. Tony Durbin's having a very disastrous season, and this is certainly the cure for it right now. But Devereaux is still holding on to the lead right now. Gaspar de Souza in the 40 car has worked his way up to second, and Palmer Styles the third. Remember, Palmer Styles is running for the Independence Trophy, which he can win tonight. Zelda Ashby in the 55 car shuffles past Devereaux into the lead. Currently, Martina is hoping for another yellow that would put him back on the lead lap. Craig Yonster in the 69 car is actually looking to be a threat to win this race. Yonser goes on the inside to take over the lead. Tony Durbin and Scott Bates dueling for position there. Yulia Nasova in the 34 car having another very strong run. Looks like the, the new engines that the Katsov team has gotten have really suited this car. Nasova qualified in the top 10 and she's, well, dropped through the field pretty early on, but she's uh, come back through the field in this 34 and having another strong run in that car. Robert Dorian in the 47 car has had nothing but a disastrous season, but looks like tonight could be his night as well. Dorian in the lead, and, uh, well, he's putting Leonard Roderick a lap down. Cesar Villanova in the 60 car is not in contention to win this race. Uh, Villanova is a lap behind. Craig Mumbert in the 6 car has always been one to watch on the short tracks. In fact, he's been nothing short of spectacular on them. Now, he is currently running very strongly. He started out very slowly, like Nasova, but he is slowly making his way forward, except in this shot where he's on the outside and he's going backwards. Looks like all that modified experience has certainly helped Mummert out here in the TM Master Cup Series, in particular on these short ovals. Curtis Darcy is in the 39 car tonight, replacing Danny Sabin for this race after his second place in Indy, and he finds the wall. Curtis Darcy has not really been having a very good weekend, and whoa, that's a long, long time to be riding the wall. Uh, Darcy really not been having the best of weekends. He'll be back with this team for its finale in Decatur. Tony Durbin in the 33 car has now assumed the lead of the race after putting Dan McKay a lap down and with a little bit of help from Ethan Everett, I might like to add as well. There is Craig Yonser in second back there and you'll also notice the bright pink Volpe of Zach Duff who is, I believe, still in the lead lap as Everett is now uh, now officially down a lap. You'll notice he's uh, trying to play nice with the leaders um, and now you see he's doing what a back marker should do and move out of the way a little bit. There's Zach Duff in the Volpe right there, that bright pink car. Alan Hodges in the 13. There's Mike Whitmore in the 36 right there. Mike Whitmore gets stuck behind Ethan Everett. It's probably not the best lane to be in. And now there you see Scott Stoiler way on the inside in that brown car. Here's Chris Johans in the 64 car. He's in 10th place, moving his way forward. He's the closest real challenger to Adrian Devereaux for the title. Yuli Nasova hit the pit lane on lap 80, as you might have seen in the background. Adrian Devereaux and pretty much the rest of the field pits on lap 81. Tony Durbin in the lead of the race. I see a couple of cars stayed out. Lap 82, Franz Redleck, who is the other military veteran driver in the race. He served his time in the German Air Force. And coming into the pits, minor contact with Chris Allen. However, normally a pit lane collision warrants a uh, trip to the steward's office however the officials could find no fault in that little action there craig yonser is now in the lead of the race with yulina silva in second his pit stops have cycled out and by the way i might like to point out that is the first pit lane collision i've seen all season that has not warranted a uh, steward's inquiry as nasova goes around craig yonser in the lead of the race adrian Devereaux has assumed the lead after 93 laps have gone by, and oh yeah, that's his closest title rival, Chris Johans in second, Craig Yonser, who could win the Independence Trophy in third, and Scott Stoiler, who uh, has actually decided to be fast this week, is currently running in fourth. So, now you see Johans has moved into the lead of the race, Nasova having a strong run back there in fifth, Yonser is going to challenge Devereaux, and he's going to try to move around the Frenchman, 
but all this racing up front is going to draw Alan Hodges in the 13 and Scott Bates, who we're riding with, into the battle for the lead as well. Scott Bates in this 88 car has just been hunting them down, and he is flying regardless of whether or not he's in a pack or by himself. He really has an affinity for some tr for some tracks like this on these higher bank tracks. Just really knows how to set up a car and adjust on it to make it work for him. And now here he is in this 88 car. Here he is going for the lead of the race, and the Team EFR car is now P1 in front of the rest of the field once again. Scott Bates has clearly been flying tonight, and it's sh and uh, well, it's just a continuation of that. Adrian Devereaux assumed the lead, and now he's coming to lap Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car. Now, there are some people saying that Pliskin uh, may have done something wrong there with that uh, first caution. However, uh, I've yet to see um, any, uh, any graphics saying that the stewards will be looking at that after the race. Pliskin holds Devereaux up just a little bit, but not enough for Devereaux to lose the lead. Alan Hodges and Scott Bates, who also have very strong cars, second and third. I'd watch out for that 88 car. He's been very strong. You see him coming around inside of Alan Hodges. It's been fairly difficult to get by either Adrian Devereaux or Scott Bates. And remember, Devereaux won at the Grand Detour of, Qu of Quincy earlier in the year. But a track very similar to this. Luciano Savaral was one of the hometown heroes. He qualified fairly well, but remember, after Japan, he was sent to the back. He's now worked his way back forwards. It's taken him a very long time as Chris Johans goes three wide for the lead in that 64. Johans, uh, remember, was in position to win at Quincy, which is, uh, as I said a little earlier, very similar to this track. Craig Janser in the 69 uh, continues to impress tonight. Nasova also continuing to impress as Nasova and Scott Stoidler have just moved into first and second. I don't know where Scott Stoidler has decided to actually started to be fast, but uh, this is clearly the best run of the year he's had. Stoidler, an amazing run, but Devereaux three wide for the lead. Devereaux is continuing his strong form tonight as Ethan Everett appears to have some problems. He's already passed the pit entry, so he's going to have to wait for the next lap to get around. Uh, I'd put, pull that thing out of the apron, son. Uh, Ethan Everett's clearly got a, a terminal problem there. What? I don't understand why he's staying on the racetrack and not pulling out of the apron at this point. Uh, is, this is silly. Come on, pull it, up, pull it out of the apron. Ethan Everett's still in the middle of the track. And, oh no! Nasova has hit run straight into the back of Ethan Everett. I have... I can't justify why Everett did that. That is ridiculous. There's no reason for him to stay in the middle of the track like that. Pliskin's done in the 16. That's a huge hit that Pliskin took. And Scott Stoidler, after a solid run, is out as well. I don't know what was going through Ethan Everett's mind when that happened. That That's just inconceivable that uh, someone would have that little common sense to do that. Ridiculous move by Everett. This, uh, now, Davina Henton in car number one is suffering some mechanical problems. She was on the lead lap. She's going to pull it into the pits, but she will lose a lap doing so. Car number one is having a strong run. As here is Adrian Devereaux and Tony Durbin have a bit of tag under uh, the caution period. Now, um... Well, I wonder what that means. Well, Scott Bates has resumed the lead of the race. Assumed the lead of the race. Mike Whitmore is in second. You may have noticed that Dale Roswell's car has encountered problems on the restart. In that 17 car, he is done for the night. And now, Bates is uh, leading the race. Just a few laps to go. Lewis Kingston in the 44 is just shot in the lead. Kingston's been nowhere all night. And he's just come on strong when it matters the most. Typical Lewis Kingston kind of race. Now here is Chris Johans in that 64 car, makes a three wide move, coming uh, into second place, but now they're all getting sucked behind Scott Bates, Craig Yonser in with a shout to win this thing. Here is Adrian Devereaux going by, Lewis Kingston is in contention, Tom Delgado is not in contention, he's a lap behind I believe. And now Craig Yonser out, a little out to dry at the moment, Palmer Styles at the way he's going, he will take home the independence trophy, but it's going to be very close in that uh, Renac 21 car. So Palmer having a very strong run for his own team. He will be leaving the series, we believe, at the end of the year and moving over to the ASCC, where uh, we believe he has a factory deal with Lennard already in place to run over there. We wish Palmer the best of luck if that is in fact the case. However, that is just a rumor. Lewis Kingston is leading with just a few laps to go. Craig Yonser in the... Uh, 69 car is beginning to move his way through the field, but you'll notice Chris Johans moves in the lead. There comes Palmer in that 21 car. Palmer, Styles, and Craig Yonser both making a charge. Two independent trophy cars. 
marching to the front. Kingston is getting shoved to the high side. And now, Chris Johans in the lead of the race with Craig Janser just behind him. Here comes D'Souza in the 40 car with his with uh, Alan Hodges in the 13 as well. Now, in the closing stages, here is Chris Johans in the 64. Franz Redlick has just been shuffled out of line in the 94. He was second in Japan. Here is Alan Hodges in the 13. D'Souza has a run on him as well. Now, he's going to have to fend off the Portuguese driver, who a lot of people believe will be leaving the series at the end of the season because he can't really seem to find a ride. There's been some rumors that he may be going over to Tutino or a team like that because D'Souza just needs, apparently just needs a little bit of time. But so far, he is driving like a true champion tonight in that 40 car. Uh, Chris Johans is back up front on lap 141 of 155. Lewis Kingston is running in second right behind him, and that is, I believe, still Palmer in third. It's either Palmer Styles or Craig Yancer. I think it's Palmer's car, though, because that car is, uh, got a, yeah, that is Palmer's car. Okay, Scott Bates is there as well. Uh, Craig Yancer not far behind, and there is uh, Zelda Ashby back there as well, all in contention to win this race. Kingston having a very strong run towards the end when it matters, as I've already said before. Here comes D'Souza in the 40 car. Nice move by D'Souza. Very aggressive move coming into one. But that's not going to matter as much because now Kingston is being challenged by Tony Durbin and Scott Bates. Bates is going to get the first run. Kingston tries to shut the door on Bates, but he gives him enough room was what any respectful racer does. Here comes Mike Whitmore in the 36 and Ian Cooper into the mix in that bright pink car along with Palmer Styles in the 21 again. Wow, this is some good racing towards the end here as Scott Bates in the 88 car is now holding on to the lead and it's been very hard for anyone to get him out of the lead uh, that's not named Adrian Devereaux tonight. Lewis Kingston will be able to do that though and as Bates now is going to fall a little bit behind the 64 car of Chris Johans, Craig Janser, yes, is still in contention. Here is Alan Hodges, the Welshman, with just two laps, to, with just under a couple laps to go. Is now Alan Hodges going to make a run on Chris Johans, who's trying for his second one of the year. Devereaux is right there as well in the 26 car. Ian Cooper as well in the frame to win this race. And now we're coming back towards the white flag. This is one lap to go now. Devereaux second, here comes D'Souza, and Lewis Kingston makes a charge to try to win this thing. But Alan Hodges, the Welshman, is holding on. He's retiring from full-time driving at the end of this year. His teammate, Devereaux, is running for the championship. But that doesn't matter to Alan Hodges. All that matters for him is that there's a checkered flag in front of him with his name on it as Alan Hodges takes home the 2011 round of Brazil in a thrilling finish with Lewis Kingston in second and Adrian Devereaux completing the podium. As strong as that 88 car was tonight, fourth place will be a somewhat bitter pill for Scott Bates to uh, swallow tonight. Robert Dorian in very strong fifth place. Chris Johans will have to settle for sixth. Mike Whitmore seventh. D'Souza has a very strong run in eighth. And Ian Cooper in tenth. That's his first point since he won Indy earlier in the year. Luciano Savaral has not had a very good weekend so far. Tony Durbin. Palmer Styles, very strong finish for Palmer's team. You'll also notice Azuma Kazuyama in the 43 Tutino came strong at the end of the race. More points for them. Good job by Kaziyama's uh, team. Franz Redlex had a pretty disastrous weekend. He rounded off with a good finish, 17th. Craig Mummer, 18th, I think was uh, looking for a little bit more there. Chris Allen sort of snuck up on that 19th place. And Curtis Darcy got a very strong run at the end of the race, came home 20th. And let's have a look at the TM Master Cup Series driver's points. Entering the final race of the year at Decatur, Adrian Devereaux and Chris Johans are the only two drivers that can still win the TM Master Cup Series Drivers Championship. Interesting to note here, history will be made either way, regardless of who comes out winning the championship. If Devereaux wins the championship, it'll be a first time a non-American driver has won the Master Cup, and it will also be the first time a driver has won the RRL title, and it will also be the championship. If Chris Johans wins the championship, it'll be the first time a driver has won both the Master Cup and the Arla Championship. And it will be the first championship for King Arthur Thomas's team in quite some time. Remember, Camelot Racing is leaving the series at the end of the year. Chris Johans and Scott Stoyler will both be moving over to the Mitchell and Sons team, which will be coming back full time with the Tremwells next year. But there was a major trophy handed out tonight in the TM Master Cup series. And that was the Independence Trophy, which went to Palmer Styles in Palmer Styles Racing, a hard-fought battle through the season with Allie Riggs, 
but it was Styles who came out on top. The Independence Trophy this year was very, very exciting, with even an Independence Trophy driver winning a race in Jose Luis Martinez. Now that the Independence Trophy has been decided, it's time to turn our attention to the TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship, which will be settled the next time out at Decatur.